David Vasquez went from a farm boy raised in a poor village in the sugarcane fields of Central America to being accepted to Harvard Business School Online. He's the author of six books, a number one bestseller. He's a TEDx speaker on self-leadership and has been a recurrent on-air collaborator for Univision. Ovi has worked for global corporations like Apple, Tesla, Salesforce, Uber, and General Motors. Ovi is a role model for first-generation college students. He educates and connects with students by sharing his story and insights on how they can succeed in school. Through social media, Ovi has helped thousands of students nationwide by sharing over a million dollars in scholarships for minority students. He emerges today as one of the most sought after bilingual youth leadership speakers of all time. Un aplauso for our keynote speaker. Great. You just never know when it's going to be the next time you will do your next accomplishment. Imagine for one second, there you are, 17 years old, in a high school where you don't speak English, you live in a garage, you work in the warehouse of loading trucks, you live by yourself, trying to make yourself sandwiches, and then you get off work at 2 in the morning, and you're driving your old carcachita vieja, right? $700, $750 car that I used to have. It was 2 in the morning, and there I was, mm, driving in the freeway. Have you guys ever seen the movie Fast and Furious, AI? I was going so fast, the police got furious. So he pulled me over. And there I was, 17 years old, todo nervioso, todo con miedo, you know, like I was so fearful because I'm undocumented. I don't have a driver's license at the moment, right? So he's coming to me. Have you ever seen a scary movie before? That's how it felt. So imagine, there you are. It's 2 in the morning. It's very windy. It's dark. The police come at you, and you can hear the steps as he approaches your car. And he said, and he knocks the window. And I look at him and he says, roll down your window. <laughs> window come down. There you are. You don't speak English. Ton nervioso, ton miedoso, ton ansioso. And you know you don't have a driver's license, so you know that this car is about to be gone. Young man, you know why I pulled you over? I don't speak English. So I just go, like, no. I pulled you over because you were doing 65 miles an, uh, an hour in a 35 mile zone. Where are you going so fast? I don't speak English. So I just look at him like I don't know what to say. Give me a registration, driver's license, and insurance. So there you are. You hand over the registration, you hand over the, the insurance. But what do you not give him? Driver's license. Why do you not give him a driver's license? Because you don't have one. I don't give him a driver's license. He says, where's the driver's license? And I'm still, look, I'm still acting like I'm looking for it, you know what I mean? Police smart, so he says, you don't have a driver's license, do you? Not tonight. <laughs> Wait for me, he went to his car, and he probably took two, three minutes in the car. But to me, in that moment, Imagine you, right? A teenager, two in the morning, it's very windy, it's very dark, todo nervioso, todo miedoso. It feels like eternity waiting for that police person to come over to your car. And you can again hear the steps. Young man, instead of California, in order to open a motor vehicle, you need a driver's license. I'm, gonna have, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to tow, tow this car. Step out of your vehicle, hand me, your, 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 hand me your, your, your key, and take out your belongings. So I get out of my carcachita vieja on the side of the freeway, take out my backpack, take out my stinky shoes from work, you know what I mean? Take out my thick books, my biology books, my algebra books. I don't want to give him the key though, you know, because I grew up so poor, ni siquiera tenía bicicleta. Like I didn't even have a bike growing up in Guatemala. And he says, come on, you got to hand me over those keys. I give him the keys. A few minutes later, the tow truck comes in, hooks up the car, and boom, 
se llevó mi carcachita vieja. A three in the morning. I called my friend Luis. Hey Luis, me paró la policía. Police pulled me over. Can you come pick me up? He says, what happened, fool? I was going fast, man. So I'm, I'm just trying to get to go to sleep. Sure, he goes pick me up. But I don't have a driver's license, so I couldn't get the car out. So the very next Friday that I got my paycheck, what do you think I did with the money? What do you think I did? Compré otra carcachita vieja. But another $700 bucket. And there you are. You get off work at 2 in the morning. You're driving back home again. When I say home, I mean my garage, right? I'm going on the freeway. Suddenly, tuk, 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 tuk. Se murió. La carcachita vieja. It's three in the morning, so I called the guy who sold me the car. Don Luis, I'm sorry to call you this time in the morning, but the car died on me. I just want to know if something's wrong with it so I can fix it. And he says, oh, chamaco, le pusiste gasolina al carro? Like, did you put gas in the car? I said, no, because I can see it has gas, right? It shows me the little gauge. He says, man, I forgot to tell you, the gauge doesn't work. <laughs> There you are, three in the morning, teenager, right? It's really cold, it's really, it's really windy. But I run over to the gas station. I get the little red gallon of gas. I fill it up with gas, run back to the car. And as I approach the car, who do you think was with the car? The police. There you are approaching your car. He sees me approaching. He looks at me, points at me, and he says, Sir, is this your vehicle? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? I show him the little red gallon, right? Ran out of gas. And he proceeded to ask me this very next question. What do you think he asked? Do you have a driver's license? Not tonight. I'm going to have to tow this car. And there you are, a teenager. You don't live with your parents. You're undocumented, you have to work in, your, in a warehouse to support yourself. You don't speak English in the classes. People make fun of you because you speak with a super broken accent. Can you all hear my accent? Say, I. I knew you were judging me. <laughs> But I want to let you know this. If you speak with an accent, if you work with a student that speaks with an accent, that we may speak with an accent, but we don't think with one. When I applied to the Harvard program, it, it didn't say on the application, do you have an accent, yes or no. It just says, what do you wish to do if you get accepted into this program? So my question to you is, when you graduate, when you go to college, when you graduate from college, what do you want to do when you get in college? And the very answer that, to that question It's going to make the entire difference of your whole experience in school. And there I was in school. I didn't know about Cesar Chavez. I didn't know that someone previously had worked to build something for me, to be the model of inspiration. Someone that would say these three powerful words. And what are these three powerful words? Let's see if you know them. The first one is what? Three. Second one? Three. Third? Let's say it all together. One, two, three. Again, one, two, three. Exactly. Somebody said, si sí, se puede. And now when I began to learn that, I said, no, pues entonces si sí, se puede, right? It didn't say, si sí, se puede if you have papers. Si sí, se puede if you live with your parents. It just says, what did he say? Sí, that's it. And that's what you have to go, keep on telling yourself. When you, get, when you get stuck in school, when you don't understand the class, I was in that biology class, and they failed me the class. Why do you think they failed me? Because I couldn't under, understand the terms. I was sitting next to my classmate, this Mexican guy who was born and raised in the U.S., but he was Mexican, right? And he was acting a fool every day. And one day I noticed, we walk out of biology class, he goes to another class, and I go to another class. And I said, hey, way, ¿a dónde te vas después de la clase? Like, where do you go after school, after the class? And he says, oh, I go to AP English, the advanced placement, yes? So I went to my counselor and I said, 
Miss Vasquez, I want to go where he goes. I want to go to the advanced English because I thought maybe I learn English quicker because I don't speak English at that moment, right? And my counselor said, I'm so sorry, mijo, I can't put you there because he doesn't advance. You, you, you're not going to be able to handle it. But in my mind, there were only three words ringing in my head. Que si se puede, because I'm thinking if he's always hand, acting a fool in class, I'm thinking, well, if he can go, because I thought he was stupid, right? I'm thinking, well, he's stupid. If he can go, I can go. I didn't say to myself, oh, I didn't ask him, do you live with your parents? Do you not work? I didn't ask him. I just said, where do you go? And if you go, that means I can go. And that is the very first thing that you have to keep in mind. If someone has done something for you before, we have to honor what they've built, and we build upon it. The reason why you're here today is because somebody brought you here. Now you get to stand on the shoulders of giants. And as you know, giants is a word metaphorically, right? Because you're not literally standing on the uh, shoulders of giants, yes? So this is how I grew up. In Guatemala, I was a cowboy, because you see, a cow and boy. <laughs> and I was working. And when I began to speak English, I used to say, Hi, my name is Ovidilio. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? And then you begin to listen, to learn more advanced sentences, yes? Hi. My name is Ovidilio. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? Where are you from? I'm from Watermelon. Watermelon? What country is that? You don't know Watermelon? Mexico? Watermelon, right? <laughs> and people will be like, do you mean Guatemala? Yes, Guatemala. Oh, it's Guatemala. But I didn't, you never think to yourself, oh my God, my accent is not perfect. I won't be able to make it. The only thing you have to keep reminding yourself are, the, are, are these three powerful words. And what are they? Sí, Otra vez? Sí, con ganas? Eso mero, con ganas. Because there you are sometimes in class. And even the people that are your friends try to, try to derail you from your education, try to derail you from your dream, try to derail you from how far you can go. I had a girlfriend, her name was Carmen. What's, what was her name? Carmen era de Michoacán. I know, I know there are a lot of Michoacanos everywhere, right? Carmen was from Michoacán. But here, here's what happened with Carmen. Carmen loved to cut class at lunch to go get drunk. So she would tell me, hey, tú eres mi novio, like you're my boyfriend. If you love me, you got to go with me, cut classes, because if I get too drunk, you got to take care of me. See what I mean? Are you seeing the problem already here? And I would say to Carmen, Carmen, but how am I going to learn English if I'm not in class? She didn't care about my goals because she already spoke English. She didn't care about my future because was, I was an undocumented immigrant. She was a legal permanent resident. So she didn't care much, right? She wanted to manipulate me just because she was giving me a little bit of love, a little bit of attention. Unos besitos por aquí, por allá, you know what I mean? She wanted to pull me away. She wanted to pull me away. She wanted to pull me away. About a year ago, I spoke with Carmen. She works in a dead-end job. She has three kids. She married a husband that works in construction. And we know there's nothing wrong with those jobs. But she had a much brighter future. Because here I am, traveling throughout the United States. And Univision, you know, I, when I got on Univision, I sent the video to my mom, and she called me back immediately. Like, I don't think she finished watching the whole video. Oh, my God, mijo, you famous now. And she asked me this very next question. Mijo, ¿y cuándo va a salir en las telenovelas? <laughs> like, when are you going to be in the soap operas? But this is where you, you can start from nowhere. This was the kitchen where I grew up. Because sometimes here in the U.S. you say to yourself, oh, I live in a poor, small town. There is no future for me. Imagine you live in a poor, poor, small village in a third world country, yes? So when I say, si se puede, I don't add the, si se puede if you don't come from a small village, right? Si se puede if you don't have a girlfriend that tries to manipulate you, right? Si se puede if your counselor says, no, that's too hard for you. Don't go there, right? All I said to myself was, Yo sé que yo voy a poder porque sí se puede. Dijeron que sí se puede. Sí se puede. Ya estoy donde hay. 
Voy a aprovechar. Like, I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity. And there I was in the classes, learning to speak English, just remembering where I'm from, remembering that I grew up like this with a bathroom with no water because there's no running water, remembering that I was working in this warehouse. It's me, your video. Some of you know me by day. I don't know how it occurred to uh, record this video. I show you today one of the things but I there did. I was, moving trucks, offloading boxes, trying to learn to speak English. My car gets taken away. But before I was able to go to school, my mom brought me to the US. Because you know how sometimes your own parents don't want you to go to school? My mom didn't let me go to school for a year and a half. Le tuve que rogar, mom, please let me go to school. Pero en español, ¿verdad? Que she didn't speak English and I didn't speak English. Mom, por favor, déjeme ir a la escuela. No, mijo. I brought you here so that you can help me what? Work. So you know this thing. So that we can pay that? It's exactly what my mom would say. And have you ever had a situation where you had to go to an appointment with your parents and you had to translate for them? You ever had that day? My mom had a doctor's appointment. We got to show up to the place. And the, the door was closed. She doesn't know how to ask the nurse. So she says, excuse me, do you speak Spanish? And the nurse said, I'm so sorry. No, I don't. So my mom goes to the second nurse, and she says, excuse me, do you speak Spanish? I live in California, so was, that was really my lucky day, you know, that she didn't find somebody that spoke Spanish. And the second nurse said, what do you think she said? I'm so sorry, no, I don't speak Spanish. And in that moment, I saw my window of opportunity. Ya ve, mama? Por eso necesito ir a la escuela. Like, this is why I need to go to school. So I could speak English. So we could ask these people, should we go? Should we stay? Should we wait? Is this the wrong building? Is this the wrong department? Is this the wrong floor? She said to, she said to me, very audacious, she said, you really want to go to school, mijo? Es lo que le estaba diciendo. Like, this is what I've been telling you. And that's how I was able to go to school. And I love to share this story with you because I learned in school. There's a baby camel and mama camel. The mama camel would represent my mom. The baby camel would represent me. So baby camel looks up the mama camel. He says, mommy, why do I have these very wide feet? Baby camel begins to look at himself, his traits, his char characteristics, begins to see what he was born with. And I was born with a desire to learn. I was born with a feeling in my heart, que si se puede hacer algo aquí. Not just be in the warehouse offloading truck, box after box after box, a thousand boxes, and then get into the other truck, and then box after box after box, a thousand boxes, and then get into the other truck until you offload 10, 14 trucks every night. And the baby camel says, why do I have these very white feet? Mama camel says, baby, because we are animals of the desert. So we need these white feet. We can easily stand on sand to make the long, to travel the long distance. Baby camel looks up the mama camel and he says, but why do I have this very thick and furry skin? Mama camel says, because we are animals of the desert and we need this very thick and furry skin. We can easily stand the, the heat of the sun so we can travel the long distance. Baby camel still looks up and he says, but mommy, why do I have this very large hump in my back? Because baby, we are animals of the and we were born to travel the long. So we need this large hump so we can easily store fat and water so we can travel the long distance. So the baby camel asked this very last question. Mommy, so why do we live in the zoo? And that's exactly what I'm saying to you. I was figuring out, why am I working in a warehouse? Why do we live in a two-bedroom apartment where I have to sleep in the, in the couch in the living room, my mom lives in one bedroom, and we have to rent the other bedroom because my mom can't afford to pay the rent, even though she takes my whole check and only gives me $50 back. I'm telling her, please let me go to school. Maybe I can become something. And she's telling me, mijo, you tienes ganas, tienes deseo, but guess what? I brought you two so we can pay that. And that's when I realized this that I had something in me very special. Even though I grew up poor, I want to show you what I had in me. 
even though I never met my dad, even though my mom would beat us up really bad, I knew it in my heart that inside of me I had a professional. That's what I had. So when you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you remind yourself of, of three, these three words, what are the three words? Once again. Once again. It's the power of three, right? You say three words, you say three times. You say three words, you say three times. You say three words, and you say three times until it, it becomes part of you, until it becomes part of your being. You know, some people say to me one time, have you ever been discriminated before? Not really. I don't wake up thinking, oh, my God, I'm brown today. I'm going to be discriminated. You know what I mean? In fact, I never knew I was brown until I came to the U.S. that they told me, you're brown. It's going to be hard for you, you know? But they told me in English, and I didn't understand, so it didn't really register in my head. You know what I mean? I just woke up thinking, I'm in the United States of America, and this is the land of? It still is the land of opportunity. No matter how the political movement may be, Still, people are willing to die to get here, to get to where you're sitting here now. And that's what you, you must not forget. In uh, Oakland uh, Unified School District, they compared the data. The immigrant kids of the same household have better grades than their brothers and sisters who were born in the U.S. And you may say, now there's no difference in income. Now there's no difference in neighborhood. What is the difference now? El hambre. Las ganas. Porque uno sabe lo que es no tener. Y cuando lo ves enfrente de ti, dices, I'm going to take full advantage of all this cake. And you're going to enjoy it. But sometimes you think to yourself, I had, it the, I had it my whole life, so I don't want this cake anymore. But the cake's still sweet. The cake's still big. And there's enough cake to go around for everybody. Somebody said to me, Ovi, I don't know if I should even go to college because I don't have money. Well, I didn't have money either. And guess why they gave me a full ride? Why do you think they gave me a full ride? Because I was poor. So the reason for which you think you shouldn't apply is the reason for which you should apply because it's the reason for which they would give you more resources. You see what I mean? If you apply to an Ivy League and your family makes less than 175000 and you get accepted, tuition free. Who knew, right? Nobody told me this when I was in school. Nobody told me this. They just told me, Mijo, I brought you here to help me work so we can pay the bills, so we can pay the rent, and we can go back. My mom had a mentality. Come here, but let's go back. And I thought to myself, no, come here, and let's take it even farther. Sometimes our own familia cannot imagine that maybe one day you're going to publish six books like I did. Maybe one day you're going to get accepted into a Harvard program like I did. Maybe one day you're going to show up on TV like I did. And your family is going to call you and be like, Mija, can you take me there? Quiero conocer a la persona que sale en la tele, you know what I mean? And it's going to be so cool. So you're going to need mentorships. You're going to need guidance. And in this case, the mentorship sometimes is in person. Sometimes it's through YouTube videos, right? I watch many YouTube videos of people who change a lot of lives. And then I worked for Apple, Tesla, Salesforce, Uber, and then I was on Univision 14. Bienvenidos a nuestra programación de las 6 de la mañana, right? But when you are in school, you have to envision. One skill of a leader is to be able to have vision. You have to envision yourself in the future and say, what am I going to do for me? What am I going to do for my hermanitos? For my hermanitas? Por mis primitos? Por mis primitas? por mi mamá que se rompe el lomo en tres trabajos y todavía regresa a la casa y me hace la comida y me limpia el cuarto y todavía limpia la cocina y todavía lava la ropa por mi papá que trabaja dos, tres trabajos en el campo y viene y se queja del dolor de rodillas, del dolor de espaldas, del dolor de cuello. Who are you going to dedicate this success to? You have to envision yourself in the future and say, I imagine how proud my mom would be to see me cross the stage, not only from high school, but cross the stage from college and say, con la comadre, you know, comadre, let me tell you, my daughter, 
She's an engineer now. She's a lawyer now. She's an astronaut now. But you have to see it for yourself because even my own mom couldn't see it. One time I was giving a speech similar to this and I finished the speech and I called my mom and she said, mijo, ¿y cómo le fue? Like, how did it go? I said, it went great, mom. And she said, and how much did they pay you? I immediately thought to myself, man, if I tell her the real number, she's going to ask me for some money right now. I said, mom, me pagaron cinco mil dólares. They pay me five thousand dollars. And my mom said, and how long do you speak for? I said, 45 minutes. And she asked me this very next question that I didn't expect to get. She said, mijo, and what do you tell these people? And then I realized something. My own mother, even though I already been to college, even though I already published books, even though I already been on TV, even though I already traveled the nation, all over the nation, she still yet can't see that I have value to provide in this world. Sometimes the closest person to you is going to be the most difficult one to persuade, to convince that you can do great things in your life. But when you go back to the classroom, as long as you remember these three words, and what are they? Otra vez! Otra vez! As long as you remember que si se puede, you're in the toughest class and you know, man, if this person is doing it, I know I can do it too. If you can leverage technology, sometimes you have your phone and you spend two, three hours on Instagram, on TikTok, right? But you spend three hours now on trying to master this subject and you get it over with. In college, I was doing some classes that I hated with all my life. And then I thought to myself, man, I better get it done faster so I don't have to deal with it now. You know, just get it over with, yes? Because then you have to see this other thing. As a leader, you have to build community. You have to build partnerships. You have to get mentorship. You have to also deliver mentorship. You have to tutor some other kids because if you can, if you can explain to them a subject that you're currently learning, you can learn it better yourself. And this is the thing. Sometimes us, we look for someone that they must speak Spanish. And if they don't speak Spanish, we don't really trust the person, yes? These people, none of them are Latinos. None of them spoke Spanish. And they made the biggest difference in my life in high school. Here we have Ms. Igohar, Mitch and his wife, Lynette. This is Ms. Igohar's son, Mr. Pipkin, graphic design class, Chris, and Ms. Morris. None of those people spoke Spanish. And yet, I was wise enough to listen and to, to be led by their great intention to me, just going from class to class, and to be able to graduate school. How long does it take to graduate high school? How many years? I graduated in three. English learner, immigrant kid, in three. Gracias, familia. So if you're really getting the point, say, I'm getting the point. If you're really getting the message, say, I'm getting the message. Now turn to the person next to you, give me a high five, say, I'm getting the point. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Here's a phrase that I would like for you to, to say to yourself. Are you ready for this phrase? This phrase is made up by my friend. He's an older gentleman, retired superintendent. His name is Mr. Martin Mares. He trains migrant kids to get accepted into Ivy Leagues. This one phrase he uses with them all the time. And I said, Mr. Mares, can I borrow your phrase? And he says, man, if you charge for your speeches, I'm going to have to charge you for the phrase. And this is the phrase. He has them go like this with the hands up, like when you're winning and you're celebrating. And he says, I'm destined for greatness. And he does it with little kids, with middle schoolers, with high schoolers. And he does it so much that they believe it. And he has helped exactly 355 poor kids from Central Valley in California get into Harvard, Yale, 
U Penn, and all the Ivy Leagues, because that's all he does. And he has helped over 2,000 other students get into the best universities in California, but these students are all poor, right? There's a little town in California, they don't even have lights. And I thought to myself, in California? How is that? How is that possible? The fifth biggest economy in the world? You see, you may be struggling one day in your class. You may be struggling one day in your home. But just remember this. Somebody probably has it worse than you. And you just have to keep reminding yourself, que si se puede, que si se puede, y que si se puede. So let's go like this, and you're going to say, I'm destined for greatness when I say three, yes? One, two, three. Now say it like you mean it. One, two, three. Again, one, two, three. How many of you can hear my accent say I? I knew you were still judging me. I traveled to Phoenix, Arizona. I give a 45-minute speech to 500 management people for a billion-dollar corporation. I step off the stage. And they hand me a $15,000 check for speaking in English with an accent. Can you still hear my accent? Because it doesn't matter, right? I'm only alive for two reasons, because my mom would beat me up really bad when I was growing up. You know how sometimes your mom beat you with the chunk, I'd be like, orale! Not my mom. She would grab la silla, you know, the chair, la escoba. This is how bad it was. I never met my dad because someone killed my dad when I was born. My mom literally stabbed my sister with a knife in the back, like literally stabbed her in the back. My mom was cruel. My mom was no one to challenge. So I'm only alive for two reasons. Because God is great and because he made me good looking. <laughs> I know some of you are laughing because you think, Actually, I think he's ugly. But it doesn't matter what people say about you. It matters how you talk to yourself. It matters what you see in the mirror. It matters what you, how you feel about yourself. Because how you feel about yourself is the energy you transmit to others. It's the confidence you transmit to others. And when you're interviewing for a job, and you're interviewing for an internship, and you're interviewing for your college acceptance, they're going to say to you, can you tell me about yourself? And you confidently will say, I grew up in a very challenging situation in my home. I had to move from place to place. We had very little resources, but there is something about me. I am very resourceful. I like to go the extra mile. I don't want to become an engineer just to make a lot of money. I want to become a mechanical, biomechanical engineer to create, to create items that will change other people's lives. I want to become a scientist that will be known around the world. And the person in front of you is going to say, oh my gosh, she is so confident. If they don't accept you, if they don't give you a scholarship, they're going to go home and they won't be able to sleep feeling guilty that they're killing your big dreams. So you have to exude confidence. Everybody say confidence. confidence. Everybody say I'm destined for greatness. Everybody say I am a leader. I am a leader. Defy the odds and set a new standard. Because sometimes... You know how your mom says, can you please, mijo, can you please, mija, help me wash the clothes? And you're like, ah, but I'm tired, mom. I don't want to do it. You have to remember this thing. Your mom is probably 30, 40, 50 years old. They don't have as much energy as you do. And somehow, they still come from their work, which they may not like, which they may hate how much they get paid which they may, may not like the schedule. But somehow they still come home. They still cook for you your favorite pupusas, your favorite empanadas, your favorite enchiladas, your favorite, your favorite eh, eh, mole poblano, you know what I mean? How do they get the energy? They have a reason to keep on pushing, to keep on moving forward. And that reason is you. And my question to you is this, when you are feeling like, you're, you, like you want to give up, like you, like you want to give in to your friend's 
peer pressure. Because they're like, hey, you got to go with me. Yo, you got to be cool. When you feel like you're giving in, you have to remember who is the reason. Who will you make proud? When I was walking across the stage and getting my diploma, nobody was taking pictures for me in the audience because I live by myself. But there's one person that was watching me graduate from heaven, and it was my grandmother, Doña Elena Sarseño Riz, that I show you the picture really briefly here. This is my grandmother right there. Who will be the reason that you will set a new standard for? Who will be the reason that will help you remind it? Keep reminded, why are you going to do this? Because the leader set the new standard. The leader set the example. The leader puts in the action. The leader not only talks, the leader also do the walk. You, you walk the talk. When you really say, I want to do something great with my life, and then they say, would you like to come to our after school program so that you can get yourself ahead? And be like, no, I got something to do after school. In that moment, that's when the incongruency comes in. The reason why I was able to graduate high school, I took every extra class. I went to every summer school program. I went to the zero period classes where you could go early. But the reason why I would go early is because they give you free food. <laughs> they say, you come to the zero period class, we'll give you free food. And I live by myself, right? So I want somebody else to give me some food. <laughs> so I go to, and they say, if you come to our after school program, we're going to give you some. So I go to where there is the food. Sometimes those little things keep you motivated to go to the next step. And you don't realize. Todos los días. How do you get to graduation? You show up every day. And you show up every day. And you show up every day. It's no rocket science. Because I never thought to myself that I was smart, you know? I knew I was good looking. But I never thought I was smart. You know what I mean? So that's why I like to show you this right here. Okay, the mentorships. The scholarships. The people. You got to keep on working on your dream. Regardless of the immigration status. Why? Because I was undocumented throughout my high school. And then 2011, 12, 13, 14, I work in warehouses, I work in gas stations, I work in construction until I got my DACA with my social security number so I could be able to work. But I had already graduated, so now I can go to college easily, yes? And I applied to college, and when I applied to college, the person called me two days later and he says, Hi, this is Jeff Manzanero. May I speak to Obi Vasquez? Yes, sir, this is Obi Vasquez. He says, I have a couple of questions for you. You applied for a college program, did you not? Yes, I did. Are you Hispanic? Uh, yes, I am. Do you happen to be the first in your family to go to college? Yes, I am. He says, not only do you qualify for, for a college program, but someone already paid for you in full. If I had not applied, I would have never gotten that call. Would you agree? So my advice to you is this. Leaders take action. Leaders take what? So you got to take action. The action is filling out the application. The action is meeting up with the counselor. The action is going to the mentorship program. The action is going to the other programs that are here. The action is waking up today in the morning so that you could be here. The action is telling your mom, mom, I love you. But sometimes when you tell her I love you, you got to show it with the grades because the mom says, Okay, you love me, but show, show me with the great mija. Mi trabajo es trabajar, y tu trabajo es? See, you know this already. Or did we practice this last night? Your parents say, mijo, mija, my job is to work and your job is to? We know this. It's no rocket science. And as leaders, we have to look ourselves in the mirror. And know that we are congruent, that we can inspire our little ones at home, that we can inspire. Sometimes you see your mom, sometimes you see your grandma, your grandpa come visit you. And you have to tell them how great everything is going. And then they will know. Que todo el sacrificio valió la pena. That everything they've sacrificed for you it was totally worth it. I like to show you this because sometimes the students say I don't want to go to school because I don't even know if I'm going to get a job because you watch too many news and the news says everybody's unemployed, nobody can find a job, right? This is what I discover. Big companies have what is called employee resource groups. 
These big companies are looking to hire people just like you, just like me. When I used to work for Uber, what do you think I did? First thought most people say, I think you drove cars around, right? But no. Uber flew me to Philadelphia. A chef would come and cook for us in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night when you decided to stay late. Everything was paid for, my gym membership, my phone. The only thing I paid for was my rent. And I was making a lot of money. And when I was in Philadelphia, they say, after you finish your work day today, you can go to your hotel and continue to work and you can log in over time. And I asked them, well, how much overtime can we log in every day? <laughs> they say, six hours every day. And I was making so much money, it was ridiculous. But unless somebody comes and tells you this, sometimes you don't, how many of you don't wanna work, wanna work for McDonald's, say I? See, I'm glad you say I. And here's why. I didn't say who wants to work for, for McDonald's flipping the burgers, did I? McDonald's is a huge real estate empire. The CEO of McDonald's makes $10 million a year. How many of you would like to work for, for McDonald's now? Because it, could, could you please come here? Please come here. Please, please. It will be worth it, I promise. Please come down. <laughs> Give her a hand because we're about to finish. We're about to finish. Hi, what's your name? Eline. Eileen? Yeah. Okay, not everybody gets comfortable in being in front of a, a thousand people, all right? But, um, if I may just ask, like, why do you say yes? Just give me, there's no right or wrong, just give me your, your, your initial answer. Why do you say yes? It's a good place to start off, especially if you're, like, trying to work up to, like, do something better. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Don't go yet. Because gladly I took my wallet out of my other pants. And I want to leave this message with you. I, I want to give you a hundred dollars. Okay. Is that a hundred? Is that, that's a hundred, yes? Uh, I want to give you a hundred dollars with this message. That when you engage with something valuable, value will come back to you. I'm glad you're here today. Nice to meet you. Enjoy. And the valuable thing is, if you show up, if you participate, if you engage, if you, if you do what you fear. She was fearful, she was doubtful, she was probably anxious to, to come down here because too many people, they may judge me. If you're not afraid of the judgment, if you take the action despite the fear. You know when I say, when I say I'm a leader, this defy the odds? The odds are, what are the odds that people would judge me, the people would laugh at me, the people would say, I don't like how the shirt fits on her, I don't like how the shoes look on him. It doesn't matter what other people say, it only matters is that you put yourself in a position where the opportunity is. And as a leader, you will transform your life and your family's life too. Allow me to finish with this last story, with this piece of ham right here. The man comes to the house, and the lady is doing the cooking. She cut the side of the ham off, and he says, Mi amor, why do you cut the side of the ham before you cook it? Why don't you just cook, cook the whole thing? And she says, because my mother taught me to cook like that. Call out mom. Ring, ring. Mom, he came in, saw me cooking, cut the side of the ham off before I cook it. He said, why I do it? Mom, we're wondering, why do you cut the side of the ham, and you taught me to do it like that? She said, mija, that's very simple. Because your grandma taught me to cook it like that. Cut the piece of the ham off. Call up grandma, ring, ring. ¿Qué pasó, mija? You don't call me no more. What's going on? Grandma, he came in, saw me cooking. He asked me why I cut the side of the ham off. He called mom. Mom said that you taught her to cook like that. Grandma, why do you cut the side of the ham off? Mija, that's very simple. I cut the side of the ham off because my pan is too small. There are three generations doing a thing in the same way that the other one did it. But you see, grandma did it because out of necessity. 
And sometimes we are young people and we say, I don't want to go to school because my mom didn't go, because my dad didn't go, because my grandma didn't go. But you see, they didn't go because they didn't, they didn't have a resources like the ones you do. They didn't have scholarships like the ones you're getting. They didn't have a, a conference like this, like the one you're in, in before, like, like the one you're in here now. You see, your pan is too small. You have to expand your vision. Everybody say, expand your vision. Everybody say, I'm destined for greatness. And to finish this off, we're going to say three times, si se puede. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's all from me. Thank you, familia. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Porque para mí, si se pudo. Thank you.